Okay, here's the finished mask. Uh, pretty plain on the front, just has the two eyes and then the mouth hole. The mouth is uh, an old iPhone 3GS that we had, uh, you know, just sitting around in a drawer, wasn't being used. Um, it's probably the most expensive component of this uh, mask, uh, just simply because it's an old iPhone, but uh, I think you could pick up an old iPhone pretty cheap uh, now if you really wanted to duplicate it. Many people just have, uh, you know, some old smartphone hanging around from an upgrade. Uh, it uses the app Mouth Off that has a robot uh, uh, mouth that's animated with the microphone of the, uh, the phone itself, and so it uh, animates uh, like it's talking. Uh, the two eyes, these are just some uh, PVC um, uh, plumbing fittings that I got at Lowe's, uh, a couple bucks, and then I painted the outside this silver with silver spray paint just to make it look. The inside, the whole thing was black, so the inside is just left unpainted, but the outside was painted uh, silver just to make it look more robot -y. And then the inside there, you can see the, uh, the NeoPixel rings from uh, Adafruit. Those uh, are the little, I think they're the 16 uh, NeoPixel rings. I got uh, two of them, uh, very similar to their goggle project, but instead of putting them in goggles, I put them into these plumbing fittings. On the inside, looks a little bit messy. I didn't uh, go crazy on making it super neat because it just has to last for Halloween. Uh, so a lot of hot glue <laughs> just to make everything kind of work. I had an old case uh, for the uh, the iPhone 3GS and so that old case allowed me to just hot glue the iPhone in and then I can tear it out of there afterwards and it won't have any of the hot glue on the actual iPhone. It's all on the case. Um, that's the little battery pack there on the side. That's what powers the uh, NeoPixels for the eyes. Uh, I don't know how long that'll last, but there's three double A's in there, so that should hopefully last all Halloween night. And then you can see I just uh, laid the, the wires down uh, for all the different components and hot glued over them just so that they would uh, have the hot glue uh, there. Uh, this is the speaker uh, for the voice changer. Now, I, I just got one of those cheapy voice changers from, a, uh, from the Walmart uh, store like that I can't remember it was like I don't know three or five bucks hey good bud be good and so uh, I then took my uh, Dremel tool and I cut out the little battery compartment so that I could uh, keep powering it by that thanks buddy I could keep powering it by that 12 volt uh, battery it uses a uh, trigger it uses a trigger uh, to normally uh, activate that voice changer on those little guns uh, I uh, took the little parts that uh, connected with the trigger and then I just wired it to this little extra switch that I had and hot glued that switch to the battery holder just so that I could turn it on and leave it going on for the full time. Uh, that's the little board that does the voice changing along with uh, being able to select between the different uh, voice options. I think they have like robot, little boy, old man and I can't remember the other one, but they all kind of sound pretty robot -y. I mean, it all makes your voice sound pretty uh, pretty robotic. And then, then this little guy right here is the microphone for the uh, voice changer. Again, I just hot glued it right to the back of the iPhone case, uh, right where uh, the mouth is going to be when you uh, put the mask on. Um, I used some zip ties to also uh, manage uh, some of the wires there, so I zip tied the, I, you know, ran the wires out around the NeoPixels out of these things. I zip tied around there just so that it would kind of keep it in place, but then I hot glued the heck out of it, as you can see, <laughs> just to make sure that nothing uh, gets moved or undone. Uh, protects it a little bit from the moisture that's probably going to accumulate a little bit in this mask. Uh, but like I said, it just has to last for like one day. It should hopefully be good. Uh, in here, I originally my first plan was just to use just a single uh, tile sponge. That's one of those sponges you get to work on tiles and stuff. Uh, they're nice and soft. They're a good uh, little uh, sponge. I've used them in other projects. They're cheap, uh, easy to find. And so I used the one, but the problem is with all of these components on the front of the mask, it makes it pretty front heavy. And so even with this little um, elastic band here, I put a little elastic around it too, so my son can strap it around his chin. Uh, even with that, it was still tending to fall forward. So my solution was these big bolts on the back. I just had some of these big bolts for another project. And then I just hot glued them onto the back to kind of use as a counterbalance. Uh, I also had some of this extra foam. My original plan was I was going to use another one of these little uh, sponges and definitely this would work in this uh, situation as well. I was going to have to uh, cut this sponge 
right in the middle and the easiest way I find it to cut these sponges is with an electric uh, knife like a turkey carver. Um, those work great, it cuts right through it like butter, um, but I didn't want to have to bother with that and have the unclean cuts. Uh, my wife got some of this other foam, this pink stuff, for another project and it was just sitting here and it was kind of the right thickness. So I ended up putting one on the back to kind of smush the back of the head and then one in the front just to keep the forehead away so that the nose doesn't bump into some of these little kind of hard crevices. And it actually works and I actually find with my head, this, this fits my head as well, uh, but it, it'll fit my uh, sons as well, uh, with my head I don't even have to put the strap on. Uh, just the foam keeps my head in place uh, firm enough. Um, so once everything is on, oh another thing I was going to mention, you can see here there are some little marks of where some glue was. That was originally, this little uh, speaker was originally put down here facing out. And I thought perfect, it just fits perfect right in this little space. The problem with that is um, when I put it down there and I, I hot glued it and before the hot glue really had a chance to set, I realized the, the plug to charge this phone is right here. And so I would never be able to charge the phone while it's in the mask and I, I completely forgotten to do that. So what I did is I uh, cut these uh, wires, I unsoldered them from the thing and then uh, soldered on some uh, extension wires to make this longer so that I could, because I mean it, that was that was as far as it could stretch uh, with its basic wires. And so I just uh, soldered those on and so now I have the wires running up around here and over here. This was just the best place I could find. Uh, you can still hear uh, your own voice, it's not like this covers up completely, so having it shoot out the side is not a big deal. It just gives it enough of a robot type voice. Uh, it was a fun little addition to the project and so um, it is what it is. If I had to, to do it all over again I'd probably try to figure out a way to maybe mount it possibly over on this side and find a different spot for that battery pack because that battery pack doesn't have to be there. Um, but I'd put that there first before I thought about it and so that's why there's some little um, crusty hot glue there. It's just from when I peeled it back up real quick after I realized you can't put the speaker there. Um, other than that, it works great. We're really excited to give it a try and uh, my son can't wait to be a robot. We're just having him wear some uh, gray sweatpants and sweatshirt, uh, cheap ones we found, just <laughs> to make it seem kind of like the cheesy 80s robot, but with the eyes and the mouth and the voice changer, it's really fun. So, thanks for checking it out.